Hey everybody, welcome to Workforce Gaming. I am Brad, here with Doug. Hey. I finally got around to Alan Wake 2. Yay. Doug did a review of this like <laughs> six months ago when the game actually came out, but I finally got around to it. If you've not played the game, go listen to that, because what this is, this is basically our spoiler talk discussion of Alan Wake 2. Mm -hmm. Doug basically said after that review is, whenever you finish this, we're doing this. I finished went. This is Yay. interesting to talk about. We should we should give this game some more time. So we figured it'd be an important thing yeah. to go through all the spoilers for Alan Wake 2. So we're going to jump in here. We're going to kind of talk through um, just kind of our general thoughts on the game because the game has a lot of cool themes and things that it does throughout it that mm. I think it's just kind of interesting to talk about to start with. And then we'll kind of walk through Saga, Alan Wake, Saga's part, Alan Wake's part, and ultimately where this game leaves our characters and our world. So mm -hmm. spoilers for everything. Let's get into it. Yep. The general world of Alan Wake is yes. crazy, and you can kind of throw all of the Remedy <laughs> games into this at this point, so I guess probably yeah, yeah. minor spoilers for Control, Alan Wake 1, I don't know, Max Payne, Quantum Break, why not throw those in? I, I think the one thing that I think I pointed out in the review that I really liked about this is that it makes you look back on Remedy games and any of the weird awkwardness stuff, it's like, oh no, that was all very mm -hmm. intentional, because Alan Wake 2 has that stuff in there but like done very smart ways and stuff like if we're going to be awkward we're doing that on purpose if we're gonna have like weird dialogue it's that on purpose it's not because of some weird tech thing it's, this is just the weird world of Alan yeah Wake. and i think that's kind of what what instantly jumps out at you in this game and especially kind of just that initial of like who is saga how is she connected to alan wake like you start with just guy naked mm -hmm. coming out of the water and everybody's like oh okay yep and there's a cult there and just all this stuff is just normal in this world Nobody yes. plays it like, yeah. I mean, if you think about it in any other game, real world, naked guy emerges from Lake is like the world's biggest story. After the first like half hour, it's not yeah. even really mentioned. Yeah, I, I do like, I like, um, I love how the characters don't react mm -hmm. to things. And it's something, it's something because actually I went, after I finished Alan Wake, I went back to Control, where in that similar game where like everything is going to hell and people are just like, yep, just a normal day at the office. And I really, really love that sort of tone um, because it, it's so many games spend so much time with people being transported to a wonderful, like crazy world and going, oh my God, everything's crazy. It's just like, it's so, an it's not annoying. It just takes a lot of yeah. time. <laughs> it's just like, it takes too much time for everybody to go, this is crazy. Um, and this one's just like, no. Nope. And even Saga in this, who's kind of more the straight person, is just kind of like, oh yeah, Alan Wake's writing this book. Like once she gets over that fact, like it's like, oh yeah, of course that happened. Like Alan Wake's writing this. Like it's just some crazy guy in a room typing this all up. Yeah. And that's why anything crazy happens. That's why everything seems weird. And it's just like, she accepts it within the first couple chapters of the game, like, oh yeah, everything's going to be batshit crazy. And, and that's fine. And they, and it's funny, they seem to save the emotion for when it impacts the characters directly. So like when she's talking about oh, her yeah. daughter, that's when it becomes like, fuck off. Al I love how much she hates Alan Wake. Like when she figures out that her daughter's been, oh, the couple the of times, the couple times when you're on the case board, where you're like putting her on, there's like one scene where I don't remember. It's when she first kind of realizes that like her daughter might be dead. And it's like, my daughter's dead. And you put it down. And it's like, no, I'm not doing that. And then another one pops up and he put it down again. No, I'm not thinking about it. And then she eventually just like oh, crosses yes, it out and like yeah. walks away. Like I'm not doing all those emotional moments are not the like, <gasps> oh my gosh, like the cult has killed this per. Nope. It's like this deeply emotional moment for the character. Yeah, when it matters to that, and the same thing with like Alan Wake and his yes. wife. It's like it's like the craziness of the world is never the big emotional moment. It's just that's the world we're in. It's the big emotional moment when it like yeah. matters to the character. Um, it's sick. yeah, that that finale scene. We'll get into it. That finale scene was like so so well done because of that because it's all yes, personal. Every moment of it. That's the, every big reaction she has is is so yeah. personal. Yeah. Just more big picture stuff. The way they use the Bureau of Control in this too, I thought was interesting because like. I fucking I do too. love it. So I I'm do curious. too because, because oh, do? I almost okay. expected like especially with the Alan Wake DLC being the the ending essentially of the control game between the DLCs and everything. Yeah. I was really expecting it to be like, oh no, we're running in, like Jesse's coming down to talk to us, like the whole deal, everything. Mm -hmm. It's like you run into like the monitoring station and there's just some tech out there, like, oh yeah, we're just I'm from the Bureau of Control. We're just, we're just fixing this guy up. We just, you know, just keep it here because some weird stuff happened. No big deal. And they just play it down like this is just like everyday normal thing. Kind of like we were talking about. Like, yes. at no point are we getting like backup from the Bureau of Control. At no point are we like bringing in the big guns for this. Like, it's just, no, yeah, it's just, yeah, this, this shit happens. So here we are. I love, uh, yes, I love, I, 
I love so much how they use the Federal Bear Control because it was it was actually like what I wanted from control sequels and stuff is like no not this big picture stuff. I just want like the day to day X filiness yeah. stuff. And I and exactly like how how understated the F- FBC is in this is so so good. Um, I think you mentioned just kind of monitoring station. One of my favorite. Um, I think the actual mechanics of it, the game, a lot of the stuff like the mechanics maybe aren't interesting, but just like the lore stuff about it is super interesting. I loved that the Federal Bear Control is investigating how art is impacted yeah. in this one by creating little poems. Um, so like they're creating little poems, like it's just, they're, they're not even good poems. I think it's, I think it's like the FBC guy mm-hmm. writing the poems and then seeing what happens to the world because they know that art has some sort of influence on it. So it's just like, like you said, it's all this like very small testy stuff. And then when the, I do love the scene when they do the, um, it's a very classic scene of the FBI coming in and rolling in and saying, oh, this is now under FBI jurisdiction, but the FBI gets yeah. rolled on by the FBC. This is like, this is under <laughs> FBC. <laughs> I, I just thought that was so cool. And and like what you said, it's, um, I think one of my favorite aspects was how understated it was because I think they very clearly say, we thought this was just a shadow monster thing, which we can yep. deal with. We didn't realize this was universe Full bending on, like, goofiness the devil now. is here yeah. now like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah I, I, yeah I i love that i think again it just it's it all speaks to this world that remedy has created of just it's weird go with it go with it mm. to get into kind of some of the other things that kind of play with that world too i think that are important the live action in this is incredible mm-hmm. so and yeah, yeah. i don't want other games to think that because i don't want other games to do it it's one of those things where it's like it fits this because sure. of this world and this tone but i do not do not want to see it in any other game no this is remedy's deal let remedy do it they know what they're doing don't put this in the next big battlefield game or some bullshit it it can't like alan wake's allowed to be hokey yes. So when it doesn't quite work, like I think especially because like the Alan Wake actor, his, his voice, his voice lines yes. are dubbed. Um, Sam Blake's yep. voice acting is dubbed. Um, when they have the uh, Yok- Yokovic br- or what's those guys' name, the Ka- Koskala, yeah, Koskala that's brothers. Better than I'm gonna do. But regardless, it's like it's the same actor playing twin brothers and like a very awkward sort of mm-hmm. doesn't quite work thing. But just like it fits so so well. Um, but no, I, t- I totally agree. Like, I think it just works. And that's the thing with like this Alan Wake world. Like it allows for that stuff in it without breaking it. Well, I feel like if you actually, if you want a, a good example of Remedy where it didn't work, it's Quantum Break. Because man, when it swaps the TV show, it's like, man, this just looks. Mm, I like Quantum Break, <laughs> but it's been a long time. So I'm going to pretend like it was probably what you said because I'm probably remembering it wrong. But <laughs> the, the, TV show, the TV show is weird. Actually, the one thing I did notice in this game with the live action stuff, you... I think they're playing something with the the live action is only in the world of darkness because you only see it when it's influencing and being influenced by the world of darkness. Which I, I really don't think liked. you really get much live action with Saga until the very end. Yes, I was shocked when she came. Mm-hmm. I was shocked when because she came because in. it's always yeah. when you're Alan Wake. It's Alan Wake doing this, and that's kind of when we'll get into the ending where it's like, okay, where are we in this loop? Where are we in this spiral, not yeah. loop? Like, where are we in these things? So I feel like that's really what the yeah. live action is playing with is kind of this duality of. Are we Scratch? Mm-hmm. Are we Alan Wake? Who's good? Who's bad? What world are we in? Are we in the dark place? Are we in the normal? So it just kind of plays with it, and we'll get into all that later. But the other piece yeah. of that, I love how focused in on art this is, and then you get these very unique original songs at the end of each chapter. Yes. I yeah. have like just a generic like Spotify playlist with video game music with lyrics <laughs> in it, because sometimes I'm way too ridiculous and just like, ah, I just want to listen to the Tales of Arise theme a few times. That Sure. I think Alan Wake 2 music now might trump Kingdom Hearts in terms of series with the most music in the playlist, which never <laughs> would have guessed coming into this. Yeah. Yeah, the the, the making of, you should I, I really recommend re- like looking up the making of that too. Uh it's like a really, really interesting process how they did it. Um where basically I think Sam like wrote a poem and then he gave that as sort of like, here's the inspiration. He gave it to like I think like one of the top recording groups in Iceland and said like, Hey, kind of go for it sort of thing. So I just really, I love the mix of those. Songs. And like, sometimes you just like, hang on there. Just like, listen. And I love that it was, it was such a good way to end the chapter. Cause it's such like a nice cool off of just like sitting and yeah. listening to the song because you can listen to the song and turn it off or listen to the song and then keep going. It was just like, I loved, I'm starting to appreciate more and more games with like it's chapters so that like really I, haven't. Yes, hard give me a chapter. Give me a level select. I need it. I like it. Classic things are good. Sometimes yeah, I, 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 I 
yeah one of the things you kind of mentioned with like art is like this i love how this game explores so many different aspects of art like photography filmmaking paint uh painting uh what poetry it's music it's just like i love how it's just like an exploration of all those things it's really, and you, really and you had cool. said i don't know if you mentioned in our review or not because it's been months but at one point you told me sure. alan wake 2 feels more like somebody's like weird experimental art piece more so than a video game yeah. and i was kind of like i don't know what you're talking about and it's like once you once you get about halfway through this that very much rings true because it's like okay here's the songs i wrote to go like i wrote this video game and then i made it but as some people act out some scenes and i like wrote some music to go with yeah. it and i thought it'd be cool to put some of my own po- it just all kind of comes together really cool with that yeah it feels like a huge collaboration as opposed to like yes. a single voice yeah. which i really and liked. some of the some of those yeah. songs the dark twisted and cruel song is like one of my favorite <laughs> moments in this because it's just like it hits i laughed I out too. loud I was it like, was just no. like it comes out of nowhere <laughs> like it's after this huge like twist moment big boss fight and then it's just like brr, brr, brr. <laughs> and like up until that point they'd all been just kind of this like soft rock kind of poppy feeling a little and, and it's just like brr, yeah. brr, brr, brr. <laughs> so good it's like i'm angry mm-hmm. and i'm gonna kill guys it's like all right all right a dark twist we get it we get it we get it <laughs> um before we get into our yeah. two leads i want to just kind of talk briefly about some side characters that kind of play through this whole thing alex casey sure. obviously is all over this very mm-hmm. interesting character. I don't know quite how I felt about it, just because he was used kind of all over the place, and it was kind of hard to follow what was what with it for me. Yeah, I mean, to to me, the way I saw him was a character who's just been like constantly tortured by like Alan Wake. Like he he more so than pretty much like any other character, he Alan Wake has just been like inadvertently torturing this guy for like many many years by writing all these yep. stories about him. Um, and I, I really liked, I think probably more so than any other character, he was a char- He was somebody who was really grappling with the influence Alan Wake had on his life because I think probably more so than everybody else, I think everybody had like slight influences for like a period of their life mm-hmm. on Alan Wake, but like Alex Casey is like, I don't even know if I'm a real person That's what was or interesting ever, to me. my entire existence. And, and yeah. I think he's, because th- you kind of get that feeling of like, okay, does Saga exist outside of the story? I don't know. You get, you kind of get hints and twists yeah. at it a little bit. He's the one where it's like, I'm, he, Alan Wake just created this dude, right? Like out of nothing. Like that's, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of questions. Actually, there's a lot of questions. I know it's like one of those kind of like ongoing debates. Of like, does Alex Casey ever exist? I do. Th- I do kind of like the the more. I, th- I think the more interesting one is like these are real people who are just just for whatever moment of their lives mm-hmm. being horribly impacted by Alan. Cause I think they noticed, they noted that with like the Thomas yes. Zane stuff where you hear about other characters who were prior to Alan Wake's involvement were also kind of impacted by Thomas Zane sort of thing. So I, I, to me, to me, I think the character always existed, but I just think he's just under the influence of Alan Wake more so than everybody else. Cause Alan Wake has written many, many stories yes. about him compared to, to everybody else. Cause I think he, he had, had a whole ser- book he had a series before, like, and these then two like books. Thomas Zane made the movies yeah. about him. So like, that's the thing where it's like every person in this is <laughs> just completely screwing with Alex Casey in some way or another. And yeah. And it's it's fun that it's played by Sam Lake too. I think it's an interesting idea and yeah. kind of thing. Yep, Mister Door is yes. such a the intro of him in that talk show that talk show moment. One of another one of my mm-hmm. favorite points in this game, just because it's so like he's he knows what's going on. He has all this stuff. Just very yes. interesting guy. Just very like his presence just takes over the room and takes over the scene every scene mm-hmm. he's in he just completely absorbs everything and it's your focal point of like what is this dude doing it's so great yeah i, I love how we i love how uh a lot of like the the control door motifs mm-hmm. and stuff it's like okay this guy has something to do with this um i do like too that he is not influenced by andy allen yes. stories he's like outside of them um, there's a really, really cool pickup you get very late in the game where it's one of the final, um, rhetoric, like, um, what do you call this? Like yep. manuscript pages. And it's Mr. Door deciding that he will be influenced by Alan Wake's story just for this little <laughs> bit. He's like, he, he's like, he knows that he can completely override with Alan. He's like, okay, I'll play along for this little bit. I think it's just something like Mr. Door walked through a door and exited yep. Alan Wake's life or something, something, something like something like that. Just like his exit. Um, I do like that they insinuate that Mr. Door might be Sokka's father. Um, yeah. Did no, you catch, catch any that? Of that? One. Yeah, yeah. There, there's there's a lot of connotations as to why maybe Saga has these abilities um, and all this stuff, and he, and he's somehow connected to Mr. Door and Mr. Door being very protective of her. It is one of those things that's kind of like you got to read into the stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, you know whether or not. But I do remember fun, those illusions. I, I fun really theories like are fun. Yeah. 
I like how many people don't like Alan Wake. I feel like Mr. Door is one of those guys who also doesn't like <laughs> Alan Wake. I, by the end, of, by the end, by the end of this game, I don't think Alan Wake has many fans. Like everybody just seems pissed no. at him. Like you got put in a <laughs> shitty situation. You're doing this stuff. You don't really know what you're doing, but everybody is just done with you. You just need to go away. You're just. It's very yeah. odd to have like a hated protagonist like that in the game where everybody's just talking shit about the protagonist. I like it. And it seems. And it seems like a lot of stuff. He's like, "Oh, it's it's the influence of Scratch." But then when they kind of do like a fury reveal, it's like, "I don't know, man." Most of it seems just, like it's you just, just. Are you just kind <laughs> of a like... dick? I think you just might be kind of a dick, yeah, and you I... don't realize it. Just exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, you yeah. got the Coast Coscola brothers, who you mentioned before. Yes, I just I thought they were I thought they were fun. Um, I liked how they were like, "Ha ha, comedy group," and then you realize they're actually pretty involved yep. in the. Uh, the whole cult aspect i did like how the cult really changed throughout the game as being this like malevolent force that's murdering people too um i think don't they find one of the pages like they were inspired yeah, they, like the whole reason they do this whole is to basically thing is, like oh, kill the dark shadow creatures is they basically find the people who've been yes. taken and try and get rid of them so that, that way they can protect the town so they've basically in alan wake's absence been protecting the town to make sure that the taken yeah. don't keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. So it is it, that that cult does have a hard twist there in the middle where you're like, oh, the cult, I hate the cult's messing with this cult. Oh, no, no, no. You guys are, you guys are cool. Yeah. Like it. Good job, guys. Yeah. And I, I just, I liked, I liked how they seem like this kind of joke to being more of a villain thing, to be more of yeah. a hero. I just really liked how they changed. And also, I thought the final video of him reviewing the book with his brother missing was really mm, funny mm -hmm. and great, um, where he's reviewing the, the physical characteristics yeah. of the book as opposed to Alan Wake's book itself, which we'll talk about later. But yeah, I just, I thought it was like great, great character. Cause, and they also, I like that they just did a bunch of different random things. So they just like came in as different, like easy person to put into yeah. a story somewhere because they do everything. Yeah, you can kinda, you yeah. can fit them in with anybody. They worked everywhere. Last side character yeah. before we get into the story, kind of beat by beat here, uh, Rose, who you meet very early on. Yes. And just has this like very weird interaction with Saga in a diner where she's like, Oh, you, you're Saga Anderson. Like, oh, yeah, how you been? Like, you're here. Like, you're back. Oh, you came back. And that's the first inklings you start to get of, like, okay, Saga has connections here. Like, what's going on with Saga? Because you obviously mm -hmm. don't know initially. And then you get to the nursing home, and she's like, oh, you're, like, a big thing here, huh? Yeah. And just, yeah. I, I loved how they kind of just went from, like, village crazy lady to, like, oh, no, she knows some stuff to the end, like, Oh, was she like secretly helping us this entire time? Yes, yeah. It, without maybe without her even knowing, I think one of the one of the fun theories I've been reading about her that I really liked is that she has, um, in the world of control and in Alan Wake and stuff, there's these people with like special abilities, yeah. like Saga, um, who I think actually there's like an official name they have for it in Control. Um, but somebody mentioned like Rose could potentially be one of these people. She just may not realize it because she's getting all these messages from like the other side and all this stuff. Um, but it's mostly just because she's like so obsessed with Alan Wake. I her, I loved how upbeat a character yep. she was um, in like every scene. And so anytime she got a little serious, I was like, oh, this is like a little spooky with stuff. Um, and I just that that scene where she just where Alan Wake like everything is messing up, and then she just like sees Alan Wake in the dark place was so funny. Oh yeah, movie. and this is him walking in, and she's like, "Oh, you're Alan Wake. You've been sending me these messages," and he just like blankly stares at her, like, "What? <laughs> what <are> you?" <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, no, you've been sending me messages, and you've been doing this, and I was ready for you. And he's like, uh, "Where, where, where do I go to get yep. the thing?" <laughs> yeah, and then she know. Yeah, it's it's so good. Yeah, yeah, so good. So. Let's get into it. So we have two leads here. So we got Saga and Alan Wake. Mm -hmm. um, because you can bounce back and forth, I thought it would be more relevant to kind of go through Saga's part and just everything with Saga and then get into everything with Alan Wake versus trying to bounce yeah. back and forth. So I unintentionally was just really invested in Saga's and basically played till I got the like, mm -hmm. if you go in this puddle, you will not come back. This is the end that of the game. So oh, way. yeah. Well, I didn't intend to play through straight through on Saga, so I did like two Alan Wake scenes that it, like makes you do, and then just played Saga all the mm -hmm. way through. Oh, fun! Yeah, because I, I ping pong back and forth a lot, so I was I was curious how you felt about the overall story as a result. Of it. But I think I think our you're gonna get the yeah. whole story regardless. And but, I think the only the only thing yeah. I think plays different are those scenes where they're talking back and forth, because it very much mm -hmm. feels different from Saga's perspective than Alan Wake's. Because Saga, you're kind of getting this like. She's this, I mean, by the end, is like, you asshole. Like, why are you messing with my family? What are you doing? Why am I here? Why are you messing with me? And then you see Alan Wakes, and he's like, yeah. 
I need you to help me. I need you to do this. I need you to get this. And she's just sitting there the whole time screaming at him. So I think seeing that back to back might have been more helpful. But it was just kind of fun, like seeing, like, oh no, she just hates Alan Wake, hates Alan Wake. He's messing with it. And then you get Alan Wake, you're like, no, please help me. Please help me. Here's what I need you to do. So that's, that's super interesting. That's interesting because I, I felt I felt uh, yeah that's that's uh, that's interesting because the way the thing I liked about the going back and forth is you saw more pe- you saw the patterns in the stories mm-hmm. more easily because Alan Wake is writing his story about the New York murder stuff and you're seeing the parallels in the stuff that Saga is doing with Zane and her current yeah. story so that's why I like that kind of back and forth where like to me I mean, the back and forth helped when it's like it's a spiral it's like oh yeah no that makes sense. I was kind of suspecting mm-hmm. that sort of like as we were going through it because you're seeing all the parallels between them. To start with Saga's story, I love how just abrupt this game starts. Everything about the first 20 minutes of this is abrupt. Mm-hmm. There's a naked guy walking through the woods. Go find the naked woods. Oh, yeah. He or Go find the naked guy. He gets murdered and you get one of the best title cards in the world. Hell yes. When it just... Yes. And it just pops. It's so good. <laughs> just that whole scene of like, it's so we're, not, we're not easing you into this. We're not playing a game here. Like you're just here is your here's what's happening. Take it and go. In the most violent scene oh, yeah. in the game, I think. Yeah. Like clearly. <laughs> and it just it's right yeah. there. I think it just served to kind of I think it served really well just showing that okay, we're going a little tonally different than the first Alan Wake here. Like we're mm-hmm. gonna be in yeah. in the horror, in the gore, in the crazy a little bit more than Alan Wake, which was I think more of a straightforward just kind of horror story-esque thing more of just kind of that supernatural something weird going on feeling versus like "Mm -mm, this is horror this is everything crazy yeah i I was actually a little nervous like when when that like opening came because i was like ah this is way more violent than any remedy stuff beforehand (laughs) this might be a totally different thing but as soon as like you kind of get in the town you start meeting the town's folk there was like a little off kilter and stuff like okay we're back we're back we're we're fine so (laughs) Yeah. yeah so you get into saga story and you start making these weird family connections and again, maybe it's because I wasn't ping ponging, but those felt so crazy to me that like, Which like one, when you go mean? and you meet like your grandfather and like, oh, you have a trailer yeah. in town and like, oh, yeah, your daughter drowned here. Like, it just, oh, yes. And maybe it's because yeah. I didn't have Alan Wake's perspective at the time, but it was just it all felt like out of nowhere. Like, OK, like what's going on here? Do I live here? Do I not live here? Am I did I forget yeah. everything? Did I get like. Are they crazy? Am I crazy? Who's crazy? It just, I don't know. It felt kind of funky to me initially. I liked it by the end, but initially it just kind of all had this like hit of like, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, I got you. Especially with like the grandpa and stuff and all this. Yeah. I remember being like a little bit weird, but I remember, I I think the thing I kind of liked is that that, I think that's when she starts realizing that like Alan Wake is messing with her and that like she, like he's messing with her past and I think that I think that all just kinds of lead to her daughter potentially being mm-hmm. in danger, which is like that's that's all that's yes, kind of building uh, up yeah. to is like, did this asshole kill my daughter <laughs> yeah. kind of thing? And yeah, and yeah. and again, I liked it eventually, but it just I I feel like when you get to when you go to Watery the first time, it's like what why does she have a trailer here? Why does she not know about the trailer? And it's because you don't know yeah. Alan Wake's really messing with her at that point, and so and so that yes, just kind of like fair. came yeah. out of nowhere. And again, I think looking back, like oh, okay, this makes sense. Like it's. It's alluding to that, but that just, I, I just had the sense of like, you're, you're too far in. I don't know what's going on. Why are we doing this at the mo- at that moment? Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. After a while, we go to Coffee World. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. I love Coffee World. I think, um, again, I think a lot of this stuff, because we haven't really talked about like your t- opinions no, on we haven't the game at all. and stuff, because I, I know there's like, yeah, mechanically you had issues with the game, which I can which I can totally see. But the concept, because I think the thing that Coffee World to me was like made me laugh so hard the first time I saw it because because the game builds up to Coffee World. Like you see a few commercials yeah. about it. There's like guys in costumes, like all excited to talk about Coffee World. You get to Coffee World, it, it's just like a it's shitty like, handmade. Yeah, it's thing. like four. It's like four rides um, in a in a gift shop. <laughs> Yeah, and like everything's like beaten up and like handmade and stuff. I just thought it was so funny because I, I don't think it's a play on anything, but like when you think of like those types of levels with like Ferris wheels and stuff in games, like I was like these bright That's colors true. and like really crazy stuff. And I just loved how like understated and shitty it was, um, and like kind of creepy. And I just and and to me that's like one of those kind of like just it's just an interesting setting and just like something I just never seen before. You just never seen a shitty amusement park you see like run down nice amusement yeah. parks but just like this like shitty sort of handmade thing but that sort of like handmadeness 
just feels like it permeates through like everything in the game where it's like it just feels like everybody's sort of making their own little I'm, worlds and stuff and like yeah i think ways, i think that so. gives it that kind of backwoods small town vibe of like we don't have the we don't have the mm-hmm. big city stuff here like it's just no oh, yeah. yeah steve down the road he he built the ferris wheel like yeah of course he did like yeah. well it's gonna come and build a ferris wheel here like it's it's a it's a four building town in a mobile home park that's what we got here sorry guys that's it there's a nursing home yeah. for when you get old done <laughs> Yeah, it was just, it was so earnest. There's something like so earnest yeah. about the game just in general. Like that was one of those scenes I felt like so earnest for the characters of just like, they're really trying their hardest out here mm-hmm. to make it fun. But the, there's nothing You're, out you're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Get over it, guys. Yeah, exactly. You go check out the nursing home. Yeah. Actually, I don't remember if these, these might be out of order, but we'll talk about the nursing home. I think Probably. these are, these, these feel yeah, like fine. out of order. But anyway, so you go to the nursing home. Um, that was, that was probably the spookiest part of the game to me. That nursing home yeah, is so spooky. Just the, everything about it, just the locked doors. The, like, there's a couple like little like mm-hmm. flickery things happening. Just I don't know why, because there have been hospital scenes. There've been these things before. This one just really stood yeah. out to me as being just a little creepy. I think the thing that makes sometimes stuff in, I think in a lot of horror games, they want you to be isolated and alone. But there are, I think what's some of the most unsettling scenes in Silent Hill games are when you meet somebody else also in that True. world. Um, and I felt like this was just kind of the epitome of that because we haven't really talked about, oh God, what's the uh, the janitor's name? Oh yeah. Like he's, he lives at, he lives at this nursing home and stuff, but it's just, it was just really interesting seeing these people who were you so close to danger Yeah. Um, that it was just, it was just really, I think that's what made it so creepy is because like you and everybody else are kind of stuck in this i think like oh like the one guy like the one of the uh um oh shoot wasn't like one of the band members like yeah. there too one and, one uh, both of them yeah, he was like yes yeah and like what he's like kind yep. of drugged up and stuff it was just like oh because he keeps yeah. drinking that's what it was he just keeps drinking and drinking and drinking because he thinks it's warding off yep. the darkness or whatever um i yeah i just love i love that whole scene i think um we talked a little about this but it actually has one of my favorite horror moments in a game um when you so you're already in this kind of creepy um nursing home and they're talking about going to the the, the facility next door like sort of hospital facility so i was like oh, okay that's like going to be down the road it's like no no it's just like i right think it might have been door. connected and as you're walking there's like an overhang connected. yeah 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 and i just remember that transition of like going from the nursing home that's already like a little creepy very silent hill-esque and it's like walking into that and like oh there's like real danger like right yeah. here and i I don't know. It, it felt there's just something about that. Just having like the danger, like being right next door to it, it was just like really creepy. And, and even like the old woman upstairs, who's like maybe already, it's already intruded yeah. the nursing home. Like, well, in the, in the, ba- in the creepy like, basement you wander like through, that. that's right there too. Like just, it's all, oh, yeah. it, it's kind of take like every kind of like, okay, we've got kind of like maybe haunted manor, like creepy nursing home, scary mm. basement, and just kind of jammed it all in <laughs> yeah. weird lake in the forest. We kind of just jammed it all into one area there. Yeah, I just, I loved how spooky I just, that that yeah that area is just really really well done by how little they did. Yeah, and it was still yep. fucking scary. Yeah, possibly my favorite scene in the game. Alan Wake turns into Scratch in the prison. <laughs> I'm, I'm why I, I'm curious. I'm actually curious about. I that, think yeah. just because up to that point, and maybe I wasn't paying attention or I just wasn't like thinking the right way. Mm-hmm. Like I had no inclination that that was Scratch. Like it was one of those where like I don't. I don't know if mm-hmm. I was just not paying attention or they hit it really well. Either way, it yeah. came out of friggin' nowhere for me. And it just, it's such, <laughs> it's not even like a, yeah. like, it's not even a, one of those slow builds where he starts talking creepy and now he's using more like domineering yeah. language and like angrier and he's, his facial expression. It's just like, no, we go from zero to a hundred in probably four <laughs> seconds. Does he like teleport yes. kill like one yes, of the brothers he does. or something? He d- like, yeah, they kind of know where it's just like he's talking, he's talking, talking, and then boom, there it is. And it's just what the hell? Yeah. And then he's chasing you down. The light fight, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. that whole scene just it came yeah. out of nowhere for me. And that was I don't feel like very many games specifically. I think like some movies and TV shows I get a little bit, but games specifically, yeah. I feel like I very rarely get that like oh shit, this is actually what's happening right now? Okay, this just really messed with me. And I think that's why it hit so hard and I really liked it that much. Yeah, yeah, it is cool how much the game pushes earlier on that Alan Waker and Scratch are yes. two different people. They're like, no, no, they're definitely two different people. D- 
they're hot. They're 200. Like, cause I think, cause it was neat going back and forth the Alan Wake stuff because he is, he knows about Scratch and then like the New York yep. City world that he's building, the sort of like cult leader sort of thing. Um, yeah, I did, I did like that as a kind of fun. I was like, oh, and that, and that's to me is like Alan Wake is Scratch, maybe potentially always has been Scratch. I really, I really kind of like how they played on that a little bit. Um, just throughout the game of like when was there ever even a separation between mm-hmm. the two is he always possessed by the dark presence is he only sometimes it's like it's yeah it's, it's, yeah it's part of me because thinking that way wanted to go back and play the original and just see okay like when does <laughs> when does scratch sure. show up how does i haven't had the time to do that because i just finished this like a week ago but yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. we get to kind of the end of saga story we'll kind of jump to that tor and odin driving the bus through the forest just screaming and laughing the whole way through. Fantastic scene. Just again, so the game's yeah. goofy fun. I love that stuff. And then you get the big kind of final scene, final fight scene with Saga at the lake shore where you've got the band playing the song and the fireworks going off and just, yeah, it's so just good. again, cool moment. Nothing like crazy story there, but just amazing moment that I absolutely loved. I really like how they're, how they're more explicit that Alan Wake's not the only person yes. who has influence in this world um and that like the art and that's the thing we were talking about earlier like i love having the art of different artists all impacting this world Mm -hmm. in unique ways and they're like well we can use the power of music sort of thing and it's just like and that that scene where you're busting through the forest without chasing down the bus is like super fun because that area is so scary yeah of the time until you're busting through the forest (laughs) you just see the van (laughs) flying through and just whatever and just it's there it's great and then sorry it gets stocks into the dark place and we'll come back to the ending in a minute Oh, is that where it's? Yeah, I think oh, that's basically okay. her last. I think you went one. I think yeah. I think the next scene with her is doing the weird case board stuff in her mind place, where you're in the dark place. So moving on to Alan Wake, just to kind of start with the talk show room, because I think that's kind of very early yeah. on Alan Wake is when he wakes up on the talk show. Just something about like him not remembering writing this book, the guy knowing everything about the book, yeah. like this. So Saga's weird family thing kind of felt out of place to me. Like I said, this mm-hmm. I loved. I love that Alan Wake just like wakes up okay, like I have sure. no idea what's going on. What do you mean I wrote a book? I wrote this book. I didn't write that mm-hmm. book. Who wrote that book? And he's like, well, what did you do when you try to do this with the characters? What were you? Do? And he just like freezes like the hell are you talking about? It's just I think because <laughs> yeah. of having the background with Alan Wake and knowing where he is and knowing he's in the dark place, it, it lends itself more yeah, easily. And he's to, an author it, and all this other stuff. It leads yeah. it more easily into that acceptance of what's this where saga is just out of nowhere. Yeah, I, well, you just don't you know nothing about Saga, and they're and they're kind of messing with the story. But like, you had a whole game with Alan yeah. Wake, so him already being like distressed is like okay, yeah, <laughs> I'm, <gonna do> <laughs> I'm right where I am, um, bud. Yeah, I I liked um yeah I, I like the whole book stuff. I like how angry I think I mentioned this a little before. I just liked how angry Dor with it Dor was with him whenever like the camera was <laughs> off sort of thing. Yeah, he's so, he has, like and so he has the, like why are you like why are you why messing you with this? me? Like you wrote a book. Stop stop messing yeah. with me. Like tell me about your book. What's wrong with you? Yeah, 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 and like, and like, Dora's mad at him for having mm-hmm. written the book. It's like, it's very, it's very cool, subtle sort of thing that's like throughout. Yeah, I, I really, love, I really love the whole Mister Dora and when they bring on Alex Casey and stuff too. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because he kind of sits there, kind of having the same thing, just the back and forth with them is just fantastic. Yeah. Kind of wanted to throw some stuff with Alan Wake. We get to the Herald of Darkness scene, which I think is like the scene from this. <laughs> I finally understand the Game Awards. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like it's all been said, so I don't even want to get into it. That is probably one of my favorite scenes from any video game in the last, like, 10 or 15 years. Oh, like, nice. it was yeah. flawlessly executed. I want a video game mm-hmm. musical. I just, there was just something about just the way the music hit, just the different parts, the way it fits tonally so well into this game that you can just, yeah, it, it doesn't skip a beat getting into it. We don't need to tease it. We don't need to, like... Oh, something's gonna happen. You know what I mean? We're not talking like, oh, well, Alan Wake, you really like musicals, huh? And then, like, we get the big musical number. It's just, here it is. Go. Yeah. I, yeah, I like how I like how many emotions are allowed in this universe. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, like that, like that makes sense. And this game is also one of the scariest games I've ever played too. And that's that's allowed yeah. here too. And being very funny is allowed. And just a lot of, yeah, that was a, that was a that was a cool and scene. Yeah, I like giving you the flare gun to just go nuts as yeah. like crazy music's playing, and you can just. Like, basically, it's not unlimited ammo, but, I mean, the most ammo you have available to you in this game with the flare gun where you just <laughs> yeah. shoot it. Oh, so yeah. good. And I love that. I think it's about three quarters of the way through. You jump back out for a second, and he just goes, huh, didn't see that one coming. <laughs> like, completely straight face. <laughs> you take, like, ten steps, and then yeah. you're just right back into it. And it's just, 
it's so good. I, I loved it. It's, yeah. I really want Remedy's next game just to be a musical. I think that would be hilarious and amazing. Just <laughs> these scenes on top of each other and just kind of go a little crazy with them. Probably get old really quick, but... You know, Control... Yeah, Control Two, Control Two's music scene is gonna be oh, out of yeah. Control L, but with, uh, with as much yeah. with as much like publicity and press as this guy, you know, whatever the next one is is gonna gonna do it three times bigger. As you're going along, we meet Thomas Zane. We'll just kind of deal with all the Thomas Zane stuff here. That one felt like I, that was another one that I don't feel like I quite fully understood. He's trapped in the dark place. He's making movies. It, His movies are kind of connected to Alan Wake, but Alan Wake's not writing about him because he's a separate person. Like that's where I kind of like I I kind of didn't quite feel. See how Thomas Zane fit in. It was, yeah, it was like a weird retcon. Kind yeah, of. It was, it's a retcon. It is like legitimately a retcon because right because he was he was a um, poet in the original game, and he was also the guy like in the dark place in the sub in the submarine suit thing um, or the scuba suit, like helping Alan Wake along the way. And I think I think what they did is they just made it a more interesting thing where that version of Thomas Zane, the poet is just another sort of amalgamation of another yeah. writer or like a movie maker in this case, creating something like that. I, I, I liked that he was played by the same actor. I think at first I was like, oh, this is getting a little confusing and weird. I was like, who made Yeah, that, that's that kind, kind of where of I got thing. stuck. But, and, and that's where, and that's, that's kind of what the game. There's like parts. So I was like, ah, I'm just going to yep, roll with the, it. Yeah. No, it's funny. Yeah. I think it's funny that Thomas Zane like works with Alan Wake. It's funny that Thomas Zane was also working with scratch. Um, it's funny that he's just like, looks like the same act. He's like the same actor with a different, with his yep. like normal voice instead. Um, and I, I did like um, just how it, how like um, the movie they showed near the end, how that just echoed a lot of the stories. I really do like how they just kind of show like this story here is the same as the story here is the same story here. It's, it's like five to it's just another one of the five or six different stories going on. They're all, essentially the same story that's been going on yeah and then alan just shoots him in the head (laughs) (laughs) does he kill zane i think all right all right so that's that's done now and cool yeah Uh, yeah. i don't know that was the one that stuck out to me as being like i'm just gonna go with it i trust you i'm sure this makes sense guys (laughs) you do you (laughs) yeah zane stuff i never quite tied together it it happens sometimes the stuff i did really mm. love is your creepy ass apartment yes. you go mm. to a couple times and just as you learn more about what happens with alice is just fantastic yeah. walking through there the first time and just seeing the creepy pictures and like trying to figure out what's going on you get the like yeah. video clips of just the like uptight interview on her where she's talking through like all her art and everything it's just so good so creepy as you're walking through there just i don't know what's going on it it's one of those two where you like let your guard down, like nothing's gonna happen in here, right? And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I like that they they make it seem like you are like you are just about to run around, run to scratch yes, around like exactly. every corner of that place, like every time it's like he's like he's through this door. I know he's here. I know he's here. Um, and then it's just Alan Wake, and I. And I, I did like that kind of, I don't know if it's a twist necessarily, but like the presence that's haunting her that he's like, it's Scratch. I know he's trying to get her. It's like, that's nah, man, you. that's just you. That is, that's just you. Scratch is around your apartment because um, you're around your apartment. The apartment. Yeah. And, and that's, the, that's the whole thing where it's like, I like, I like they kind of keep going back to like, is Scratch, how much of Scratch is actually influencing this? Or is this just like Alan Wake just misinterpreting some previous thing he's already been doing? Um, yeah yeah um it's the post-credit scene but i feel like it fits here best the the post-credit scene where alice actually jumped into the lake to go into the dark place is such a good ending yeah it was cool i I was i totally thought she i totally thought she killed herself i totally missed the i was just like man that's fucking brutal and the thing that's kind of fun when like the sort of because i've been trying to like read theories and stuff just kind of understand what people are interpreting one of the fun things i've i've heard it's like kind of with the the full the band that's that's doing the herald of darkness yeah. song is that the actual people who are in the darkness helping him similar is the wife that who's doing the interviews actually his like wife in the dark place helping him oh. um, which i kind of liked because she is talking to him at some points um kind of like indirectly sort of talking to him uh, but yeah and i i love that and that's that sort of thing where like they use photography really interesting they use the video really interesting it's just like man this is just so many so many voices in this mm-hmm. game. It's like the opposite of video games. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Subtle dig there. It is. Subtle it is. dig there. That's a... <laughs> it is. It's the opposite. It's like he's no, the one voice saying. and you see his one voice. And this is just like a cacophony yeah. of people. It's you you really definitely cool. feel that this was made by a group more so than one person's big yeah. picture plan here. 
Exactly. So to kind of get into the ending here as we kind of go there. So <laughs> it kind of has, I feel like this has like a big end. I feel like this is one of those games where like the ending itself is like a two hour chunk of the like 15 yeah, to 20 yeah. hour game. Cause it's just kind of the ending just kind of spirals out of control, <laughs> spirals out of control. A little bit. <laughs> um, so yeah. Alan kind of keeps going on this rant about how I can't change it. Like it's a horror story, so I can kind of mess with it. I liked that a lot Mm -hmm. where it's like this art has such an influence that I can't just all of a sudden make it a happy place. I can play with the subtle details, but I can't actually like go like, Oh no, everyone's fine now. Hooray. Because then that's not true to the art itself. I thought that was a really cool way to kind of play with forcing this world to stay where it was in a way that logically made sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's kind of neat. So I guess the question I do have, though, is when does this does when does it happen before where Alan Wake shoots himself? Because that was one of the big things I really liked uh, with the scratch is the one writing the story versus Alan Wake's trying to fix the fucked up story he wrote about New York. City. Yeah. So he just walks into the writer's room and just point blank, yeah. just poof, done. I don't remember exactly where that where that came in it's probably three quarters of the way i think because it's right around when you're starting to figure out that alan wake is scratch and that we're just kind of going through this kind of loop thing and there's some subtle changes yeah i i really liked that scene and that scene kind of like really cemented the like no no this isn't the right like it's not scratch and alan wake like there's something weird going on here for me yeah i I think i think the thing i liked about it is that you they they Again, like, again, this might be my own thing. I'm not sure there's, like, in the text of the game necessarily. But, like, where he keeps thinking Scratch is the one editing it. But you see the scene where he finds his manuscript that you saw yes. him write and going, oh, God, this is horrible. Because the story he's reading is the one with the New York City yep. murders and all that stuff. And then he is the, he one, is the one. He's not. not yeah, he the, scratches out the he scratches yeah. out his name. To put it saga in, right? That's like well, that's what he's doing. That's the third book, right? Is him is him inserting saga to save yes, everything. The third right? the third book is is him. Yeah. Yes, bringing saga and him together in the third book. So so it's not it, the whole thing. There's no the antagonist like the entire time you think it's scratch who's been doing this. It's like the antagonist is you, <laughs> man. <laughs> You're the guy. And, and that's the thing this. where I just really and love again that. just kind of jumping ahead a little bit here, um, where like the dark presence absorbs Alex Casey. Because that's what that's where I kind of yeah, got a little bit yeah. confused. It's like if Alan Wake and Scratch are two different people, yeah. then what the hell is this thing that's absorbed Alex Casey all of a sudden out of nowhere? That is fair. That I don't know. Yeah, that I don't quite get. because 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 there is a yes, dark presence. That's obviously there. That's, yeah, that's you're in the dark place. There's a dark presence. There, yeah. That all is real. But how much of that is a part of Alan when he shoots himself? Does that leave yeah. and then go to Alex Casey? So I, that's where I kind of start to lose it. Yeah, it gets a little timey wimey. And, and I think that's yeah. part of the the whole like, oh, we're spiraling through this. Like, okay, it's not just the same thing repeated. It's subtle changes going through every time. Yes. And one of those subtle changes yeah. now has turned into a big change with Alex Casey now taking on kind of this villain role. Once Alan mm-hmm. more or less, I think, figures out that oh, I am Scratch. So the dark pleasant. Yeah. Maybe like I guess in my mind, what my thought was was. Once Alan has that self-realization that he is Scratch, like the Dark Presence can't have that power over him. And that's when it jumps sure, to him because yeah. Alan Wake now knows, because he's working with Saga, of I'm I'm not Scratch isn't real, like I can fix this because Scratch is me. Yeah. Yeah. And then Alex Casey again, always having the worst time <laughs> of his life. I think that's so funny that Alex it, it's funny that he's like played by Sam, like the director of the game. Like, was he just like tortured by this game? This game just <laughs> <laughs> him getting the shit kicked out of him for whatever, and then him is Max yeah. getting the shit kicked out of him. He's just this guy's just constantly. Just if if we need a guy who just is miserable, I got you, I got you. Yeah, um, yeah. I do like Deer Fest when it pops up because it's kind of been hitting that. It's just yeah. like this celebration of Alan Wake's book release. I thought that was just kind of a fun whatever moment. I think that whole yeah. chapter is like twelve minutes long. It was just like okay. Yay, Alan, you did it. Great job, bud. Yeah. And then you're like, this isn't real. This isn't yeah. real. I'm just running through it. Kind of a cool quick scene. Yeah, I like that. I like that the, the big evil darkness was this like bright yeah. sunny day. <laughs> the, like, oh. the one sunny day in the entire game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's cool. The saga, the saga scene to end this game where you're in the mind place. Another mm-hmm. one of those just super highlights, super big highlights for me. Going through all your personal connections to this and what's happened. Everything yeah. kind of playing back through, just so good. 
playing with kind of what had happened up to that point. Yeah, I, I like the repetition that they had you do in the saga mechanics yes. and the the rules, and they like made it very clear you understood the rules of how saga's mechanics worked, and then they kept breaking them mm-hmm. at the end in cool, interesting ways. Um, I, I yeah, that was that was really cool, and I think you mentioned it earlier with the um, when you're putting up her, her daughter's picture, and it keeps getting darker yep. and darker and darker on the. the yeah, and I really and again, I think it just kind of speaks to this idea of like who has control of what. Who is Saga? Where did she come mm. from? Like, how much of this is real? How much isn't? It's a very, very cool scene. Wandering through there, finding the pieces, putting them back up there. The case board itself, I thought was kind of, eh, whatever. Up until then, it's like, oh, no. Now I like the case board. This is a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More case yeah, board, yeah, more yeah. case yeah. board. Oh, yeah. No, it, it definitely made it worth that point. I like, and then the interview scenes where she actually starts talking with yes. people rather than yep. just thinking about very that. Very cool, like, very cool, so very cool. cool. All right, so ending stuff. Again, this is where it gets kind of weird for me. Where I'm not 100% what happened. <laughs> first of all, yeah, that's totally first of fair. all, I don't like Saga's daughter possibly being alive, being an open-ended question. That bothered me. They so you saw so you saw the new game plus ending. No. I assume right. Okay. Yeah. Can we tell we, you or not? This is our spoiler discussion. So, we are talking about spoilers. You should probably <laughs> so. So you think you don't like it because I, I agreed with you because it's like this is because literally I was like, this is how Inception. Yeah, it's, it's, it literally is the same thing. Like, like this, hello. This... And, and OK, credits. Well, in New Game Plus, her daughter. Answers. Oh, cool. And it's just like, yeah. So and, but that's me wasn't like I was like and then I then to me is like, OK, would, would you guys just have that as the original ending? You guys realize actually cutting it earlier was maybe more interesting. No, I like um, that. Yeah, Having I not mean, seen I, it, I like I that like, much better. I just yeah, I don't. <laughs> The game is full of ambiguity, so I want some closure sure. at the end. Yeah, I don't. I felt like kind of the whole game I was going through, like, okay, is this real? Is this real? Is this real? Is this real? Does is she dead? Yeah. Is she in this other place? Did she ever exist at all? And then finally, at the end, it's like, okay, we get to make the phone call we've tried to make four other times. Yeah. Cut to credits. It's like, no, just either let her answer, or let it go to voicemail. <laughs> pick one. I don't care which, but pick one so I know. Yeah. It- the thing that I think is kind of interesting, too, because I think it's the ending, too, is like where they mentioned it's a yep. spiral. So it's like, OK, the story's moving forward. There are repeating and stuff like that. The thing that's is interesting, it's that it ends on like the, it's a spiral, but you don't see or hear about what's kicking up the next story, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, it kind of ends not definitively, obviously, but like there's no creation of a new story yeah. yet. If, we, if, if we're already answering the question that like her daughter's alive, it's like her daughter's alive. That's the end of the story. Well, um, so I, I do wish there's a little bit more into like leading into what's next. Not not even just as a sequel tease, but just like to set the spiral again. I mean, unless, unless are I we at the end of the spiral? Like the, eventually, a spiral ends, right? I mean, yeah, that's fair. We pick the pen up yeah, eventually, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe the yeah. end of the spiral is her daughter being alive, and like that's where we get to the middle of the spiral. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. we're, I don't know. It just it all felt very, very ambiguous, which I didn't like. I liked I liked that throughout it. Didn't like it at the end. I need some. I feel like I needed sure. something to hang it under. I did like the fact that Alan like was like, I'm going to be the hero. I'm going to take like the bullet. I'm done. I liked yeah. that a lot. That felt very final. That felt like a good ending for Alan Wake. If it is the actual ending mm. for Alan Wake, I liked that, especially with just kind of all he to this point knew about Alice of like, I was the one tormenting her. Yeah. I was scratch. I did this to her. I saw where she was. I saw her jump off that cliff. Like I saw all this stuff. Mm. I liked that a lot, but just yeah. sagas where it's just like, I think my thing with saga was I never quite grasped exactly how real she was. <laughs> and I think that's what bothered me through the, way, the whole thing, the whole the yeah. way through where it's just like, is she real? Is she not real? Is this her real family? Is this not a real family? Does she live in like Virginia or wherever she was from? Or does she live? Here? I just, that whole stuff, I think just not having that conclusion for me until I heard about the new game plus ending, I think was just kind of another moment of just like, just tell me who this girl is. Is she real? Can you just tell me, like, Saga was yeah. real. Alan only moved her here for the book. Thank you. Credits. Yeah, yeah it, it is. It is a bit weird. I, I, I like. I like the. I. But again, like, until I was like reading more online, where there's like more like definitive thing. I do like the idea of of Alan Wake fucking with real yes. people as opposed to Alan Wake just creating people. Um, and I just I love that you just see that follow up from the Thomas Zane stuff and stuff. But yeah, I I think there are some like weird questions of like. Who's the guy talking to Alan Wake on the phone? Who's mm-hmm. that guy? We'll find out in the DLC and that Yay. kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, 
Yeah, it's a cool game. I I, I really I, I love this game. Um, I know you love the concept. <laughs> <laughs> I I have very mixed feelings about it overall. I, obviously, I didn't do a whole review. Yeah. But my general thoughts was I love the ideas. Not one hundred percent sure on the execution yeah. all the way through. Still, great game. Great game. That's why you're doing a spoiler cast and not exactly. a review. <laughs> great game. No, not not greatest game. <laughs> but yeah, sure. That's we cool. are workforce gaming. You can leave a comment below. Subscribe to our channel. There's a link to support us on Coffee below as well. We'll see you later. Bye.